Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode in the three E's to optimal health empowerment series, where we're sharing about using food as medicine. I'm Vilan Hawkins. I'm a partner with the Pocketies Docs and part of the Just One Thing for Health team. And today we are going to talk about a subject with our very own Marjorie Leon. And, you know, the three E's, educate, experiment, and empower are all designed to help you to get to the next level of your knowledge, your using, and your seeing the results of using food as medicine. And, you know, I go into this because we really do want you to feel better, to look better, to live longer, and we encourage you to change your eating, to change your life, and if you're someone who has an auto, autoimmune disease, chronic illness, diabetes, heart disease, obesity, and now we're all impacted by the coronavirus, how do we come out on the other side better than when we went into all of this? That's where this education comes in. That's where you get to experiment on some of, or with some of the things that you're learning and empower yourself to make some changes if changes are required. Now is the time. You have the time to get into new habits. And with COVID-19 running rampant in today's global society, with social distancing, we want you to have be armed with what you need to do the right things for yourself and your family. So let's get educated so that you can experiment and empower yourself with Marjorie because our subject today is so awesome and conscious eating and food choices who would have thought conscious eating had anything to do with food choices but we do it all the time we what are we having for dinner tonight what do i want for breakfast am i going to drive through the drive through to do the drive through thing well things have changed how are we adapting to these changes and we want you to know about using food as medicine. And I'm just so excited that Marjorie is here with us today to share on this topic. So Marjorie, welcome. Hi there, how are you? Great, thank you. There we go. Great, just great. Managing through this yep. lockdown period has really been something for us to think about. Um, not just the fact that we've been forced into it for a number of reasons, but you know, a, a lot of times we don't take well to being forced into anything. Um, and this has had several repercussions, you know, with income and spending. I mean, you know, you've got kids home, you've got everybody home at the same time. We were talking earlier about the te technology, the impact on technology. So with all of that, once again, welcome. Tell everybody a little bit about you, especially those okay. who don't know you. Sure, thanks. Um, my name is Marjorie Leon. Um, I'm um, a researcher. I have a master's degree in psychology. Um, my topic for my dissertation for my doctoral um, work is women in obesity. So I've been studying obesity for probably four or five years, trying to figure out, you know, where we can where we can steer this ship in, the, in another direction. Um, I'm a tiny habits coach, and just for good measure, I am also a just one thing for health facilitator as well. Awesome, and. I know that this is a topic that is very close to your heart and what you've been studying and delivering on as a Tiny Habits coach. Tell us a little bit about the impact that you see that we are experiencing as we're dealing with this COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic. Yeah, mm -hmm. excuse me. I see a lot of things. And the, the most encouraging thing that I see is that during this time we are our our social fabric has really been unraveled and the the encouraging part of that is that we're starting to rethink everything so we're we're at the point where we're starting to wonder if this thing that we always did is what we should do going forward and i think that's what i usually talked about in tiny habits as a prompt that's a really good opportunity 
this is the queen mother of opportunities because we now have this place where we have been forced to redesign our lives in a very short span of time. And the encouraging thing again is that if we can do this under basically duress, we can definitely figure out ways moving forward that will be more helpful and more helpful. Awesome. And you're so right. I know that you have a short presentation for us. Why don't we just jump into that? Okay, let's do that. All right. Um, um, this is food choices, and we've mostly focused on the food just for the fact that food, as we know, is medicine. And we'll just make that full screen. There we go. And I okay, love how so you mentioned that the food is medicine, but it's a particular type of food, right? I absolutely. Mean, because food also is part of what has gotten us into this situation. Absolutely. And I'm always amazed when you see things on the news that talk about the people that have gotten sick from this, this, this virus. And it's heartbreaking. It really is. But if you want to, I, I always kind of put it in perspective a little bit. 40,000 people a month die from hypertension and heart-related diseases. So that's in itself a pandemic. So my take on this is really, how do we nip all of these things in the bud and really get us back on the path to health? Absolutely. <laughs> It's something for us to consider, and it is about us as individuals doing our part. Um, you know, absolutely. I think about a lot of times our doctors are there. They're there to help us. We have to take responsibility for our own health and well-being. And I love how you spoke about that because the um, spread of this, the fact that 40,000 people you said a day are dying oh from heart disease, I mean, that is something that can be changed. We can shift Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Because it, as we go through this virus issue, we, we start realizing how much control we have and how much our very lives depend on our habits. And that's kind of what this presentation was meant to address. Great. Can't wait to get into it. Okay. All right, so this is, a, this is a phrase that most people are not familiar with, is a zoonotic disease. Zoonotic diseases are things that are transmitted from animals to humans. So this particular virus was from what they call a wet market, and I shudder to think what that means, but it really means that there is a marketplace where wild animals, domestic animals, farm animals are all present and there are body fluids, there are blood, fecal matter, saliva, all of that being present in one place and they're commingling and it's probably not a very sanitary environment. Um, that occurs all over the world. If we think that Wuhan, China is the only place this kind of thing exists, we really need to think about that because you go to a lot of places and you talk about factory farming and you talk about um we here in in colorado we live in a very remote part of colorado and we have what we call the chicken farm and it is a great big huge corrugated steel building that every 14 days or so stinks to high heaven because the dead animals are shushed outside and the uh, pile is turned and it impacts our, our air quality every month. Um, and I know that there are situations like that in, in cities all across America and in other places, but these kind of things are where we get the diseases we're dealing with now. Um, we've had SARS, we've had MERS, we've had H1N1, we've had swine flu, we've had um, bird flu. All of those outbreaks are all due to animal agriculture and it you know gives me the chills just to even think about that but that's the condition where you know it's inhumane for one thing but it is also definitely a place where we get uh, bacteria and viruses from um and now as you as you think about that for a second 
just think about how our lives used to be just a month ago. We were all in big groups. We were shopping together. We were walking the mall. We were at movies, out to dinner, and life went on without even really thinking about it. But now, and this is this was a reality too. We ate this kind of stuff all day long. We were eating the chips and the pizza and the you know desserts and all of that. And we thought that that kind of eating from the gas station convenience store stuff was going to allow us to continue being, you know, whatever level of health we thought we were. However, that really has enabled this virus to continue moving forward. Uh, I love this quote from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Um, Nutrition is a critical determinant of immune response. So we have this virus raging through our population. He calls it um, malnutrition. Malnutrition is the most common cause of immunodeficiency in the world. And in the United States, we don't like thinking about malnutrition as something that we actually have in this country. We have food insecurity in a lot of places, but we also have a glut of foods that are really bad for us. But so we have an overabundance of really crappy food and an underabundance of really nutrients. So we are overfed, but malnourished, which is a really strange position to be in. But food is one of the best tools for for preventing the disease, whether it's heart disease, like we talked about before, or it's the virus spread that we're experiencing now. Um, This brings it back a little bit to the behavior model that that I teach my clients. Um, This is um, from BJ Fogg, and he's the father of the um, Fogg behavior model and tiny habits. Um, This graphic shows that motivation is part of the equation. And right now, we're motivated. (laughs) We're very motivated because we don't, A, want to get sick, B, we don't want to get other people sick, and C, we're forced to. So we're all pretty high on the um, motivation scale. If you look at that horizontal axis, it's ability. Now, I like to break habits down into the point where they're so little that It's way over here on this right-hand side of the easy to do where it barely takes any motivation. If you look at that graphic, the easy to do and the low motivation are really, you know, it's one of those places where it's just behavior can happen. Change can happen. Um, On the right-hand corner at the top, you see the equation B equals MAP. Um, What that means is that any behavior can be either initiated or propagated through these three letters, M, motivation, A, ability, and P is a prompt. And I'm a glass half full kind of person, or half full, no, mostly full, how's that? Um, (laughs) And I like to think of the COVID-19 as a really big opportunity for us to be A, highly motivated, and B, we have this huge prompt And we have the ability to really start changing things. So for me, everything above that green line, the action line, we're right there. We're in a sweet spot of behavior right now. So that is the positive spin. Um, I always refer to um, habits in the form of a recipe. And we always take things like um, daily things that we can continue to do even when we're on lockdown. and we kind of can connect a tiny little thing to it. I'll give you an example. Um, after I, whatever the behavior is, we call it an anchor, I will do this new behavior. So for me, I have dogs. Um, so I feed the dogs twice a day. And that just doesn't go away. I mean, it, it happens every day without fail. So I've used that as a prompt to um, fill my water bottle. In this case, I have green tea. but. Um, I will fill my water bottle. And those two things happen simultaneously without thinking at this point. So connecting a small behavior to something you're already doing and celebrating that you intend to change it. You don't even have to be perfect at it because people change better when they feel good about things, when they say, yeah, I did that, I crushed that. Then when you beat yourself up and say, oh, you did it again, how stupid. You know, that kind of thing doesn't really help anybody. So changing and supporting 
you're eating is really difficult unless you have the, the motivation, the ability, and the prompt, and unless you have somebody to guide you, which is why I love Just One Thing for Health, because you have a whole support team to be able to give you the support and the encouragement that you need. Um, there is a free uh, email challenge with Just One Thing for Health. There is a free Tiny Habits Challenge as well. Both of those things just take a few days and almost no time out of your day. And I encourage you to, to look into doing that as well. Um, foods that protect your immune system. These in isolation, I, I don't, I'm not an isolationist. In isolation, I can go in and eat all garlic all day long, but it really isn't going to do me much good because I can't eat a ton of it. So if you start including these things in meals that you already love, garlic, turmeric, bitter greens, onions, citrus fruit, green tea, mushrooms, kiwis, flax seeds, berries, those are all things that really bump up your immune system and take down the level of um, inflammation in your body. Because when your body is inflamed, it's even harder to fight off bacteria, uh, viruses and things like that. And people who are really having a tough time right now are people who have underlying or comorbid conditions because those suppress the immune system and they're directly related to what we eat and how much we move. So that is the good news that there are things we can do. Foods that suppress your immune system are fried foods. Those things we all love out of a convenience store are highly Infl inflammatory, highly processed foods, and that includes sugars, grains, all of that stuff. If they're highly processed, if they come in a box and they're good for years and years, they're probably too processed for your, immu your immune system at this point. Um, meats are actually a source of pathogens, including viruses. So yes, wash your greens when you get them home, but it's really the meats right now that are the uh, source of this virus. Excess alcohol consumption definitely depresses the immune system, as do high fat foods. And high fat foods like your morning McBurger thing um, actually keep your brachial arteries from dilating. So when you get under stress or try to do some effort, like you know, remodeling your house because you're sitting around, um, those kind of things really are important for your body to be able to dilate and get more blood flow to your body. So those are things that it suppress your immune system and it's not really helpful. I don't know how many of you are um, familiar with the blue zones. I love the idea that there are pockets of um, places in the world where people routinely just live to 100. Those people always get eight to nine hours of sleep. I know I don't get eight, hour, eight hours of sleep every night, but habit-wise, winding down, reducing your screen time, stress management, deep breathing, establishing a routine for your bedtime, those are really good habits to build and those can be done in a really small way that accumulate over time. Um, stress really gets your cortisol levels down, it suppresses your immune response. And again, you can develop habits around deep breathing, journaling, um, meditation, and under all of this, you have to be able to do conscious and mindful eating. Um, this is something we make at our house all the time. This is my answer to chicken noodle soup. Um, and the, on the right-hand side, you'll see where it says greens, beans, vegetables, fruit, and intact whole grains. How I decide what we're making is I want to make one thing from each one of those categories in each meal that I make. So this is my checklist. I want to make sure that there are greens in my breakfast, lunch, and dinner and my snacks. I wanna make sure that there are beans to serve as my clean protein. Um, vegetables, the more the merrier. Fruit, fruit is actually good for you, you should eat it. Intact whole grains, oats, wheat, barley, all those things, those are good for you and help your immune system. Uh, this is a short list. I actually got this from a list on Forks Over Knives, which is another great resource. These are shelf stable or at least mostly shelf-stable things that if you have in your pantry, um, it can make it possible for you to create a lovely, healthful, immune-boosting meal during any time. You could be you know, under 
house arrest basically like we are, and you can still go ahead and make yourself a lovely meal and support your immune system with all of these. Getting the entire family involved is real important because we're all together right now. So we may as well, when, when we have the kids, they're more likely to eat the foods that they'd help create. And everybody can do things like a potato bar or a taco bar where everybody can make the foods the way they like them. And that can really help in conscious eating and in allowing everybody to add more fruits and vegetables into their diet as they, as they want. Um, batch cooking is another recommendation that I always do. Um, one day a week, just make massive amounts of food. That includes <clears throat> elements that are for like five or six meals a day, and you put them in serving size containers in the refrigerator, everybody joins in, and we can have fresh, delicious food that supports our immune system at a moment's notice. Um, healthy snacking, I love snacking. <laughs> However, um, the biggest thing for me is that a lot of us don't get enough to eat during our meals. So we're hungry two hours after. So the biggest thing is to make sure that you get a lot of food at your meal. And if you are still hungry, do something like um, oven roasted chickpeas or sweet potato fries or sweet potato and black bean burritos or a vegetable pizza or an apple. I mean, a lot of us don't think of apples as a snack anymore. Whereas years ago, we used to do that kind of a thing. Um, if you have somebody in your life who is uh, compromised as far as their immune system, you have to treat them with special care, make sure you do a little bit more distancing in the hand washing. But these are very um, foodborne illnesses, most of them. Uh, diabetes, respiratory illnesses, heart disease, depression can even be related to food consumption. Cancer is definitely a foodborne illness. Um, the anxiety and the advanced age are just another condition that we should probably be really careful with our older ones and with our immunocompromised people. Um, so that was where we want to make sure that we are working from home. Um, make sure we want to maintain nutritional excellence and manage our stress, get enough sleep, and stay hydrated. Those are really important tools that we can use to keep ourselves healthy and help us keep from spreading things to other people. Um, just as a side benefit, um, adipose tissue is metabolically active. Um, so that means the more, okay, adipose tissue is just belly fat, to put it bluntly. Um, it secretes hormones. So if we think that um, sitting on the couch, now that we're you know sequestered, and binge watching Netflix and eating potato chips is going to help us come out of this. That's a mistake. So the more adipose tissue we have, the more difficult it's going to be to fight and support, fight the, fight the virus and support our immune system. Um, having our body work for us means that we are mindful of our nutrient receptors and our stretch receptors that live in the outside of our stomach lining. They tell our stomach whether we're full enough, and tell our brain to stop the hunger cues. So this is again from Forks Over Knives. This is 500 calories of a variety of foods. You see on the right-hand side that that stomach is all the way to the top. And so the stretch receptors can say, oh, we're, we're full now. And on the other side, you can see what 500 calories of oil looks like. The stomach has no idea that we've fed ourselves. We cannot get that brain cue to turn off the hunger receptors um, if we've only put that much food in our stomach. This chart is so much so helpful. Um, it's difficult to read, I'm sure, but I can definitely get you a better better copy that's not as blurry. But that green line that is on that left hand side, everything to the left of that um, line is uh, things like fruits and vegetables and uh, grains and things like that that give us calories per pound that are healthful and helpful. Vegetables come in at 100 calories a pound. Fruit is about 300 calories a pound. And then as you move towards the end of that scale, those are things that are so easy to overeat on. And a lot of those things really suppress our immune system. So that's 
helpful. And if you're trying to lose weight, which I know it's difficult during this time right now because we're not going to the gym, um, but getting up and moving is really important too. But counting calories is something that I never encourage because it just makes us neurotic. <laughs> so this being able to use this kind of a, um, a framework really keeps us from having to worry about weigh-ins and calorie counting. The five calorie, the five categories again, um, that for bowls, soups, sandwiches, anything like that are always whole grains, beans, greens, vegetables, and use something really yummy. Sriracha leaps to mind. Um, salsas, you know, any kind of yummy sauce that will help you eat it because it doesn't matter if you go to the grocery store and buy the most beautiful greens and they wither away in your refrigerator. So getting something yummy on the top will motivate you to eat the food. And these are no recipe recipes that you can slap together in a minute and have some really good food for yourself. Um, snacks and desserts are not off the menu. This is an avocado and pecan tart. Um, it's not something we would encourage you to eat all the time, but it's definitely something that's still on the menu and does exist in the helpful eating sphere. Um, I always encourage people to eat like your life depends on it. And now with this uh, COVID-19 sweeping through our nation, your, your life very well may. So I would like to encourage you to um, really be mindful when you choose your next meal and include a lot of foods that are good for your immune system and that will support you and help you move forward. Um, my contact information is here. I'm sure V-Lynn will be glad to uh, supply that for you. And that's my presentation. Absolutely. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Um, that was such great information. And one of the things that we have had so much of in the way of inquiry is, so what are the foods that we can eat? Um, you know, and, and a lot of people are finding themselves thinking, I can't eat this, I can't eat that. And you know, plant-based means I can't eat this, I can't eat that. And while we encourage you to eat this, not that, we also encourage you to be very conscious about it because whole plant foods are all of the best tasting foods. Mm -hmm. They are all of the best foods for you, the most nutrient dense and Thank you, screen. <laughs> they are the foods that are easy to get your hands on right now. Um, yeah. Many of us have been to the grocery store in the last week, two weeks, three weeks, and we've seen that the shelves are bare. But mm -hmm. what is plentiful is over in the produce sections. Absolutely. So we encourage you to learn more about these foods and do more shopping in the produce sections. And that can la you can get a week's worth of groceries and prepare and, you know, Marjorie talked about batching. There's so many things that you can do. And we encourage you to experiment with all of it. And through your experimenting, you're gonna find out what you like, what you don't like. And even if you try it once and it doesn't quite sit, don't let that be the deciding factor that that is going to be something that you're not going to do. Rather say, how can I do this differently next time? Um, and what sticks in my mind are those sweet potato fries. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Yum, that's the right word for it. So let me encourage everyone to uh, find us on Facebook. Just one thing for health, like our Facebook page. And if you're interested in, let me see. If you're interested in the free email challenge that Marjorie mentioned, you can find that on the Just One Thing for Health page as well. You'll also find information about the My Health, My Priority program. And 
we just invite you to come hang out with us, play with us, get educated, learn to experiment. Wouldn't you like to have a bunch of roasted vegetables that look like this? We're moving into the season where grilling can happen. Um, put some veggies on a skewer and put them on the grill, season them up with some cayenne pepper and just have at it because this is where you'll get the most out of the time that you have being sequestered and be, come out on the other side healthier. Again, if you're interested in the email series, you can find it at justonethingforhealth.com. You'll also from there be able to find out information about the My Health, My Priority Wellness Program, of which Marjorie is a certified facilitator, and she's going to be starting a group in April, so do find out more. Um, and from both of us to all of you, for everyone who is at home doing your best, keep it up. We know this isn't perfect and it's gonna be messy, but just do your best. That's all we can do and that's what we're looking to do. So thanks for joining us, Marjorie, as we're wrapping everything up. You know, I'm just so into this just one thing stuff. And give our audience one thing that they can do, their challenge for this week. I would challenge you to go into the produce department and look around at something you are unfamiliar with and try it. Awesome. And thank you because I've done that before. What is this? And mm -hmm. I've taken a picture of it and gone home and researched it, found some recipes and then was like, okay, now I can experiment. Exactly. And that's how you get through this three E's process and you come out better on the other side. Thank you, Marjorie. I'm so excited we got to do this. And to those of you out there, we're gonna be doing more. So check us out, find us on Facebook. We'll be looking for you. Bye for now. <laughs>